In this clip I will demonstrate how to calculate partial derivatives. This clip will run through a few examples and it would be advisable if previously you had seen another clip that runs through the conceptual idea of a partial derivative. I will link this clip in the notes to this video. Here is the first example. We have a function f of two variables x1 and x2 and in particular the function is 3x1 plus 1 over x2 to the power of 3 plus lambda times x1. Lambda is just another variable but for the purpose of this it's just a constant in fact. Right? So let's calculate the first partial derivative f1 that is can also be expressed with these uh, funny deltas delta f over delta x1. So what we now got to notice if we want to calculate a partial derivative with respect to x1 x1 is the only variable we are treating as a variable everything else in our function is treated as a constant so we're looking at that first term here 3x1 the derivative of that is just 3 the second term here doesn't have our variable x1 so it would just contribute a zero to the derivative and then we just get a lambda from lambda times x1 so altogether the first part of derivative is 3 plus lambda we'll do the same trick with the partial derivative f2 or the partial derivative with respect to x2 so now x2 is our variable and everything else is a constant so this first term here 3x1 doesn't include x2 so it will just contribute a zero to the derivative then we have x2 to the power of negative 3 so we have negative 3 times x2 to the negative 4 as the derivative and that third term again doesn't have x2 and therefore only contributes a zero the partial derivative is negative 3 x2 to the negative 4 so that was our first example let's uh, go through a second example I'll just use a different function name g and instead of x1 x2 I use x and z as my variables just so that you understand that functions aren't always called f and variables can take all sorts of names and this function is now 10 times x to the half times z to the half so let's calculate the partial derivative with respect to x so gx or delta g over delta x and we'll do the same trick as before we'll recognize what is our variable x everything else is a constant so since we here have a multiplication here everything else the 10 and the set to the half are constant to our function in x and therefore let's just write these terms which are underlined with green here these are all constant factors to our variable x we'll just write them down as we would with any factor so it's 10 times set to the half and now we need to find the derivative of x to the half and that is a half times x to the negative a half so and here's our partial derivative of g with respect to x uh, we can simplify this uh, 10 times a half is 5 and then we have z to the half times x to the negative half and that is just 5 times z over x and that entire term to the half so what about our partial derivative with respect to z so delta g over delta z now the variable and the only variable we use is z everything else in our function g is a constant so this red underlined term is just a, f a constant factor to our variable z so we'll just replicate it in the derivative as we would with any factor 10 times x to the half and then we find the derivative of z to the half that is a half times z to the negative a half and we can simplify in similar fashion I'll jump one step 
x over z to the half. So 5 times x over z to the half. So now it is time to test your understanding of partial der derivatives. Here's an example which I want you to try. The function is f of x1 and x2 and it is the log of x1 times x2 plus lambda and in parentheses c minus x1 minus x2. So that's the function. Uh, you may, before you calculate derivatives, think about simplifying it in some sense. But what I want you to calculate is the partial derivative of f with respect to x1 and f2, the partial derivative of f with respect to x2. So pause the clip and try it yourself. So the simplification that is useful here is to recognize that uh, log of x1 times x2 is the same as log of x1 plus log of x2. And then back here we further simplify by, by bringing the lambda into the parenthesis uh, as such. So the first partial derivative, delta f over delta x1. x1 is our variable we are considering now. So only two of the five terms will contribute to the derivative. The derivative of log times x1 is 1 over x1. Of course, you need to know your log derivative rules. And the derivative of negative lambda times x1 is just negative lambda. Here's the solution. So let's move to the second partial derivative. Now x2 is our variable and everything else is considered a constant. So it's now these two terms that will contribute to the partial derivative 1 over x2 minus lambda.